This is Moments with Foo with James Foo Torres, better known as Foo, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Moments with Foo is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Foo. Hello and welcome to Moments with Fu. I'm your host, James Fu Torres, but you can call me Fu. And it's the name of the show. And today I have Patrick, and I'm not gonna even try to say his last name, so I'm gonna let him say it for you because that's a very complicated. But uh, he's a lawyer, he specializes on family law, but I'm gonna let him tell you more about that. But first, Patrick, how are you? Good. How are you, Fu? Thank you for having me. So my last name uh, has a lot of letters in it, but it's actually r- relatively simple to pronounce. Uh, it's Bagdasarian. So uh, I'm Patrick Bagdasarian. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to be here and this opportunity to reach out to your um, audience. Uh, I look forward to talking about various things that we do and, and see if they, I can provide some information to help your audience. Uh, I mean, anybody, business owner or not, it can benefit from from a lawyer giving giving actionable tips or advice on family law right because even if it's not something that you're doing that you need directly right now but maybe you know a family member an employee uh uh, someone a friend right in your network so um let's uh and first i want to say like i'm good right you asked me if i was good and i just want to say yes i'm doing great (laughs) and uh and let's uh kick it off with a quick introduction about yourself yeah sure Sure. I'm Patrick Bagdasarian. Um, as I stated earlier, I'm the managing partner of the Bagdasarian Law Group. We have two uh, law offices. We have one. Our headquarters is in Pasadena, um, oh, the Old Town area, Pasadena, California, to be exact. We have a satellite office for primarily to meet clients uh, in Beverly Hills. Um, and uh, so it's it's not that far away, but you know we have a significant portion of our clients are in are on the west side, and sometimes they don't want to make the trek on the freeway. So uh, but notwithstanding the fact that our offices are in Southern California, we we have cases up and down the coast of California. I have cases in San Francisco County, um, uh, Redwood, uh, Santa, Santa Barbara, Ventura, San Diego. So we represent people from throughout the state. And we've done so for uh, well over a decade. I've been a lawyer for approximately 17 years. Um, <clears throat> I'm a certified family law specialist, meaning I'm certified by the State Bar of California. Uh, to specialize in the area of family law. And I've been a certified family law specialist for almost 10 years. I, I, I got my certificate in 2014. Um, I manage six other lawyers. I oversee their work and I have about 12 staff members. So all in all, we're seven lawyers, 12 staff members and um, two additional uh, and two, two receptionists. So we're pretty, um, for a family law realm, for the family law world, we're pretty uh, a decent size. Um, and uh, this is the again only area of law we practice now for your listeners who are perhaps not familiar with what family law means as far as that moniker and they use and the reason we use that is because we rely on the family code and the family code uh, handles certain areas of law it obviously handles dissolution of marriage divorces it also handles issues related to child custody and visitation and child support for children had out of wedlock and then um, obviously under that umbrella, we, we also address domestic violence issues that can come up in a dissolution proceeding. It can come up in the paternity action, or sometimes it can come up uh, all on its own. So those are pretty much the three big areas that fall under the umbrella of family law in the state of California. Thanks for the introduction and, uh, and explaining that. So, so people are more clear because uh, sometimes we're so in our head that and it's so innate for us that it's so normal that uh, we don't we think that everybody knows it. So thanks thanks for for explaining that for context for Pete for for the sure. audience. Uh, so can now now that you have explained it, you have given us a little bit of background. Can you give us some actionable tips or advice for people that might feel like they need some some family law or somebody that that they know? And they they want to they want to know who who should I pick why should I pick them you know so just give them some actionable tools or advice yeah. for people to to, to so, go through that journey. 
so the, the 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 one thing is you you mentioned something I think is important for me to address. You said who should people pick, and I, I assume you're referring to when people are in need of a family law uh, lawyer, uh, what they should look for. Uh, look, there are a lot of good lawyers out there. I'm not I'm not here to articulate that and, and state that I'm the only show in town. Okay, there are great lawyers up and down the coast. Uh, I deal with them. A lot of them are my colleagues and friends. I've known them for uh, well over a decade. But I think if you're a lay person and you want to know where to start from, where to start from to, to hire someone that knows what they're doing, because the unfortunate thing is we have a lot of fly-by-night lawyers who try to dabble in family law because they perceive it to be a, a, a good way to make money. Um, they try to um, add that to their arsenal just to, as a revenue stream. We're not like that. We've de devoted our entire career to family law. It's the only thing we've done. We're not one of those lawyers that, you know, um, practices law depending on what the trend is, you know, um, but some people are like that. So I think it's very, very important to be aware of that if you're a lay person looking to hire a lawyer, because um, if you just Google and go, oh, OK, well, this person says they're a, a, they, they handle family law and they've done it for years and they're great at it. Well, how do I know if they're actually legitimately telling the truth? Because unfortunately, even though it's kind of against the state bar policy, some lawyers engage in what we describe as puffery. They make representations online that per, to try to boast their abilities and their qualities that sometimes are not true. Now, the fortunate <laughs> thing, yeah, the fortunate things for consumers in the state of California is that the state bar, uh, for all its faults, for all its issues that they've had in the last 10 years, um, the one thing that they have done, and I think it's very helpful for consumers, is they have articulated about 10 or 12 different areas of law that they provide certificates in and specializations. Now, this is not like a weekend course at the Holiday Inn, okay? This is not one of those flyers that you get, hey, you want to be a, spe a, a join our group, be a specialist. This is not one of those things. So the state bar, which is the same licensing board that provides lawyers their bar license to be able to practice law, identified about 10 to 12 different areas and said, hey, uh, beca because these are very niche areas of law, we're going to provide an opportunity for lawyers who, who actually devote their career to this area to get a certificate from us, to, be to become specialized and recognized by the state bar as a specialist. I'm one of those lawyers. I'm a certified family law specialist, CFLS. That's what we call ourselves. It's kind of like being a double board certified surgeon, right? It's very similar because um, we have to go through a very, very rigorous process to become a certified family law specialist recognized by the state of California. It, uh, it has two requirements, two areas of requirements. Number one, you have to have completed certain things within your career, meaning you, ha you have to have completed a certain number of trials as the lead counsel, uh, negotiated a certain number of uh, uh, settlements, um, uh, participated in mediation, participated in a very lengthy um, uh, legal education requirements, and you have to get recommendations and approvals not only from your colleagues, other lawyers, but judicial officers as well. They have to write recommendation letter for you. Uh, and, and, and this uh, quite often takes people a lot of time, a significant number of years, to complete all of these requirements to be able to then go to the next step. And the next step is taking a, uh, an exam. It's a full day examination, kind of like a mini bar exam. The bar exam now is two days. So this is now one day. It's a one day full test, several hundred questions, uh, uh, multiple choice coupled with uh, essay writing portion of it. So I was fortunate enough in, in my career to have um, hit the ground running, so to speak, right when I started practicing law at the end of 2007, early 2008. Uh, I began doing a lot of things um, as a, the first chair, uh, trials, mediations, negotiations, settlements, and court appearances. Through my career, I probably made, I, I mean, this and I, I would maybe even be underestimating this, but probably thousands of, uh, maybe three or 4,000 court appearances. And I did a, a significant number of those, uh, I would say well over 500 court appearances in the first five years. And in those first five years of practicing law, I was able to garner the experience necessary to take the examination. So in 2013, after only five years of practicing law, I completed those requirements, which usually takes most lawyers 10 years. And I took the examination 
and then I passed it and then I became certified in 2014. So I think if you're a lay person and right off the bat, you're looking to hire a family law lawyer, the first place you start is asking that lawyer or looking on the state bar website because it provides that information. Are you a certified family law specialist? And if so, how long have you been a certified family law specialist? So I think that is a very, very important issue because, I mean, you would be shocked at the number of cases that I see that I get, I, I get inherited from other lawyers where people come to me and go, hey, man, I spent $20,000 with this person and I got destroyed in court or they didn't know what they're doing or they, they dropped the ball. And, um, you know, I asked them, I go, well, was that person a certified family law specialist? And the answer is quite often, no, they weren't. Or they didn't and, even know, probably, that, that was they something didn't, that they, they should look Yeah, for, exactly. You know? Exactly. They had no idea. They're like, oh, we didn't know. He says on his website, he handles divorces. I go, well, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Because again, like yeah. I stated earlier, so many people, um, when the, you know, when the time is good, as far as what they perceive as a possibility to make money, a uh, possibility to expand their financial uh, windfall, so to speak, they will then add different areas of law. So you'll see a person go, well, personal injury is very hot right now. So I'll add that to my website. Dog bite, dog bite cases are very hot right now. I'll add that to my website. The economy is in the gutter. I'll add bankruptcy to my uh, website. You know, And then the same thing with family law. So you got to be very careful when you're hiring people for a niche area of law whether it's family law, whether it's uh, bankruptcy, whether it's probate, all of those different areas of law have specializations that are recognized by the state bar. You should always focus on hiring someone who has that certificate or else you're flying, you know, you're flying without radar, so to speak, you know, it's very dangerous. Nice. So that's the number one. Yeah, that that is, I mean, thanks for, for going so in depth into this because this is extremely valuable. and. and I didn't know this. So, you know, I'm learning. That's why I love having this yeah. podcast because I learn a lot and I can record it and then more people can learn from it. And uh, that, that is something, okay, when next time that I'm going to go uh, uh, get a lawyer for any reason and uh, look for the certifications that are done, given by like the bar, right? Like by the official the state bar, hundred percent right? state bar. That are the people yeah. that certifies you to even operate as a lawyer in the first place. So it's coming from the source, right? So 100%. that's a, that's a great, a great thing that i didn't know i know most people probably didn't know so you know business owner or not it's a great thing to know like are they specialized on this thing and now as a marketer right uh if so, someone that focuses on, on, on marketing i i i thought about that's a that's a great authority thing and differentiator and a big reason why uh, i recommend people to niche down specialize and that doesn't mean that you know if it came as a referral or something you can help it's not disrupting you and and it, it, you can help great you know that's not like just turn completely everybody away and depending on what stage you are at too right obviously depending on mm -hmm. what stage you're in business uh so if it's not taking anything away then you can take it from from other places but even if it's just publicly being able to niche down uh, in the marketing side of things and then back it with some uh, authority undeniable authority stadium pieces like uh being certified by the bar like a state bar uh, and then you can uh, after you have that build then you can throw in things like public relations that i i noticed that i've seen you feature in a lot of different places right so that's why i i mentioned that someone with a background in public relations i see all those things and uh, you know they pop out for me yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah i mean uh the thing is like uh we really um, we rely heavily on our reputation in the community. Uh, we rely heavily on the work that we've done over uh, myself over almost 17 years. And um, a significant number of our cases come from referrals based on that work and that reputation. I uh, compared to other lawyers, I do a fraction of marketing fraction and, and people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year uh, marketing to get more cases in. We don't do that. We, we're not even close to that. We're not even the same hemisphere. You know, we, we, we spend a very small amount on marketing. And the reason for that is, frankly, because we have more cases sometimes than we can shake a stick at. We quite often have to not take cases. We, we quite often have to um, politely decline representation because we have so much volume coming in. 
and we um, we really have to uh, pick and choose the cases that we take. And quite often, if somebody comes to hire us, and their case is a situation where, you know, it doesn't demand someone with our expertise, uh, I, I'll be honest with them. I'll be like, look, this is a much easier case. You can go to X Y Z lawyer. Um, it'll be less costly for you, and they could get the work done. And then we try to refer them out to appropriate people. But you know, our reputation matters. Our work product matters. That's what people. That's why people hire us. You know, and that's why people come to us and 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 trust their more uh, most important decisions in their life. Their most important things: kids, their yeah, safety, <laughs> support, security. All of these issues are in our hands, you know, and we take it very, very seriously. The most, I mean, I'm a father. And the most important thing to me in my life by far are my children. And I would fight tooth and nail for them. And if I'm ever in an unfortunate situation where I have to, um, to protect my rights as a father, as a parent, you know, I want to hire someone that knows what they're doing. Because if you take on a case and you don't have the capability of handling it, I mean, you can really, really destroy someone's life and, and people and some of these lawyers, some of these fly by night lawyers that try to do family law on the side because it's a it, it, it's a way to make a quick buck. I mean, not only is it uh, unethical from my perspective, it's borderline criminal, frankly, because I have seen them destroy people's lives and I've seen them destroy relationships between parents and children. And, and these lawyers sometimes do not take that seriously enough. But we do because we've been in it. This is the only area we've practiced. I've seen the ups and downs with clients. I've seen them lose their children, gain their children, lose their safety, gain their safety. We've seen all that. That's why experience matters in this area of law. You should not hire a dog bite lawyer to protect your custody rights. You should not hire a bankruptcy lawyer to go get you uh, financial support. Okay. Or you should not hire you know, a corporate lawyer to get you a domestic violence restraining order. Because this is all niche. This is all very, very uh, specialized area of law. And another thing, we don't have juries, okay? This is not a civil uh, forum. You don't have, it's not a typical judge, jury, and executioner. You know, you always hear that. Well, we don't have that. Our judge is the judge, jury, executioner. Every, all of our trials, all of our decisions are rendered by the judicial officer. You don't have the opportunity to put this in front of a jury. So when you hire someone that has that experience, when you hire someone that has garnered the experience, the reputation and the respect of the judicial officers and the knowledge as to what those judicial officers want or need to see in order for you to prevail in your case, that's what you're paying for. That knowledge is what's so important. If you go into a courtroom and you don't know your judge, you don't know what their tendencies are. You don't know what they like to see or what uh, what their leanings are on certain uh, uh, issues. I mean, again, you're going up a creek without a paddle. You're doing a huge disservice to your client. Can can you like? I'm I'm not sure if I understand the the difference. So like, uh, the like you don't go directly to a judge. You go to is it a JD? Is that like, well? Let me let me let me explain. No, no, let me explain. So. <clears throat> you know, in, in civil cases, okay, in civil litigation, like let's say you're in a car accident, right? You have a, you have a judge who's assigned to your case. But the, if the case goes to trial, the ultimate decision quite often is rendered by a jury. You have the opportunity to have a jury, right? I mean, yes, a, ju a judge will make decisions along the way that will impact uh, what evidence comes in, what evidence is uh, excluded, what the jury instructions are. I get all that. Okay. But, uh, it, it, you know, you have, a, it, it's kind of a little bit more of the unknown because you never know how a jury is going to react or, or, or a jury is going to render a decision until it actually happens. But that's not the case in family law. We don't have juries. Our judicial officer, our judge makes the decision, all of the decisions. Mm. That's why it's so important. If, if you hire someone that doesn't specialize in family law, if you hire someone that doesn't understand what that judge needs to see and what that judge likes to see and what evidence is required for that judicial officer, you're screwed. You're, you're, you're going up a creek without a paddle because you're going to walk into a territory where you don't know what the landscape is.
Okay, so that's why it's so important to hire someone that knows what they're doing, that has the experience and the knowledge to help you. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying that. Right. It's like, that's the difference between the jury and the judge, right? Like the jury, like when you get jury duty, right. And you get all, all like a jury of people that there it's more like, there's a lot of people, different perspectives and all that. But when you just got a judge, it's just one thing. So as long as you know, and you know, that judge, what they need to see, then exactly. you, either, you know, get it right. Or you get it wrong. Right. Like they, they do everything. So that does uh, something very important yeah. and it's super costly. Right. So you don't want to have to, you know, there's the on the untangibles, right. The priceless things, which is destroying families part that you mentioned. And then there's the cost, yeah. right. So there's just two things that you need to take it around, take, have in mind to be able to, to yeah. like, in, and, pick the right people. Right. The, and, and what you need to understand is some of these judges have been there for a long period of time. You know, I know several judges in L.A. County who have been on the bench in family law for over a decade. OK, and um, you develop relationships with the judicial officers through your work in court. They either respect you, they appreciate the way you advocate, or sometimes they don't. And they don't. Uh, and sometimes that can impact a decision that's rendered by the judicial officer. And that is just a reality. We're all human beings. I mean, I get it. They're wearing the, the robes. But you're telling me that the human element is not at play when a judge is making a decision? You know, of course it is. And you need to know that. And the only way you will know that and the only way you will be prepared is if you hire a lawyer, if he or she understands and has the experience to guide you. I have seen so many times, so often, lawyers come into court against me, whether it was a trial or a motion, and they didn't know how the judge was going to react. They didn't understand what the judge's, um, uh, you know, tendencies were. Let me give you an example. This is actually very interesting. Um, we had a case where I knew the judicial officer on the bench. And I, I, I've, known, I've known him for years. And I actually knew what sort of decisions he would render and, and what sort of decisions that he rendered, which were eventually appealed. And then the California Court of Appeals ruled in his favor. Well, I had that knowledge. I knew that going into that hearing. So I tailored my case around his prior decisions, his decisions that were upheld by the California Court of Appeal. Opposing counsel didn't even know that this judge had been appealed, didn't know that this judge had been upheld on appeal, and didn't know that what the Court of Appeal said about that judge's decision making. I knew all that. I tailored my entire case around that the strategy, the evidence, the arguments, the layout. Guess what happened at the end? We destroyed the other side. It was a complete, it was a fiasco. I mean, they, we got everything we wanted. They were up a creek without a paddle. They had no idea what they were doing. And when the judge rendered his decision, and then we got a written statement of decision articulating why he made a decision in a particular way, guess what case he cited? The very case that he had decided previously that was upheld on appeal. So opposing what, counsel what's had- What's upheld no on appeal? Just uh, so, so let me sure yeah. So let me explain uh, what that means to the lay individual. So when you have, uh, in the state of California, generally speaking, you have three levels of court, okay? You have the trial court, okay? You have the appellate court, the court of appeals, and then you have the Supreme Court. OK, so if you have a decision at the first level, which is the trial court that you don't agree with, you can appeal that. OK, and then you go to the Court of Appeals. And if the Court of Appeals renders a decision, they have the option of making that decision published. And if that decision becomes published, it is a citable area of law, meaning it it's becomes law in the state of California. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. So, so let me see if I understand. So, when it happens in the in the in the appeal, uh, that that can be then published and now given this decision that was taken, now this is basically law as reference. Correct. So, so you basically you you knowing those things is like this is this is law that is there because it was in in the appeal and now I have this information. If other people don't have that information. And you have that you have that leverage. I mean, because knowledge is power, right? And, and you know this, and this is basically law now, right? So, especially when you're in front of the judge 
who was upheld on appeal. Think it's about the same that. judge, right? So <laughs> it's the same judge. So I'm sorry, you don't have to be a rocket scientist from JPL or NASA to to think about this. How do you think that judge is going to react? How do you think that judge is going to render a decision? He's already addressed this once before, and he was upheld. So he's now more emboldened to double down. Okay, it's to use a poker terminology, you know, uh, because that's the, because again, people quite often sometimes think lawyers and judges are robots we're not we're human beings human beings have tendencies that's why we say family law is one of the most interesting areas of law because we have the x factor and the x factor is the human element okay and um people underestimate and don't appreciate how important that is when you're involved in family law litigation because you have one person making a decision about your case you have one person making a decision about your children your safety your financial well-being and your future. I mean, I mean, if, if it, it doesn't get any more uh, important and it doesn't get any more high stakes, again, to use a poker terminology, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is. Uh, family, it is the most important thing for most people, right? And as you, natural as humans, it's, it should be our priority, right? People have their priorities uh, kind of wrong sure. because of a lot of things, but... Yeah. But, uh, let me ask yeah, you a question. Main thing, you know? Food, let me ask you a question. Okay. What is the most important thing in a human being's life? From my perspective, it's family, right? Their children, their loved ones, their security, right? Whether it's physical security, not to be assaulted, violated, intimidated, and financial security, right? Honestly, other than those three things, it, it, you'd be hard pressed to find to point anything else out right uh, of, of course your health obviously health is wealth we all get that but from a perspective of family law these three areas family fi uh, personal safety and financial security i mean those are those are big ticket items brother those are items that really make or change uh, not only your future but the future of your children and the future of the children's children i mean this Family law has a ripple effect through generations. And that's what people don't understand. I have cases that I handled when the child was two years old and now they're 16 years old. And I don't want to boast, but that my efforts have helped secure safety and security for that child for basically its entire childhood. And I was involved in all of that. And I got to see all that. So I you basically become part of these families, basically, you know, like, you to a certain degree. I mean, we try to limit. Obviously, we, we always try to look at cases from a professional perspective. We don't want to get too personal because I don't want we never want to lose sight of the fact that a we're a lawyer. We're not a therapist and we're not a family member. And we always want to keep the professionalism high, uh, high because I think that's appropriate for at all times, you know. But yes, it, it, it almost feels like it because I have seen kids grow. Uh, you know, I've seen I've seen parents grow as individuals. I've seen loved ones changed over time. I mean, we've seen it all. And um, that's a unique style. And it's a unique perspective that you can only garner with experience uh, with uh, with, you know, with seeing cases develop over time, seeing families develop over time, seeing children develop over time. And that's what we can offer to individuals. We have that experience. We've seen that we've been a part of that. That's uh, that's amazing. Thanks for for telling us uh, those stories and all that knowledge. I know I learned, and I know anybody that listens to this that doesn't know much about law, like I, I don't, uh, will 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 learn from this. So thank you, thank you for, no for sharing that information. Uh, so uh, not only you know you you kind of mentioned already that that you it's family law that's your main thing. But if you want to get more specific on the type of people that you would like to reach out, that doesn't have to be maybe a possible client, but maybe partnership or things. So, who? What's the people that you would like to for them to reach out to you, and how can people find you? Yeah, so uh, you can go on our website www dot com d a g law group dot com. Um, a lot of the information, our experience, our, our practice area, our specialties are articulated on the website. As far as individuals that would, we would look for, as far as potential clients, we want uh, sensible individuals who want uh, a lawyer who will advocate for them in a passionate, responsible, 
and um, a strategic manner. Uh, because I, we believe it's very important to be smart with the decisions you make, not only for the present, but for the future, uh, both financially and from an emotional and psychological standpoint. Uh, we would always like to partner with, uh, you know, accountants, financial planners, uh, you know, business coaches, developers, because quite often we, we, we work with those individuals in our cases. We refer the cases out to them when they need a, a CPA or a forensic accountant or a financial planner. And we love building those sort of professional networks and professional relationships because, yes, I practice family law, but as so, most of the time, my clients rely on me to kind of point them in the right directions for their life. Uh, you know, whether they need a good accountant, they need a good real estate agent, they need a business manager, uh, sometimes a agents, <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we represent a lot of people in the entertainment industry. So we have an influence uh, on a wide sphere of what people need. And I'm always looking to partner with the appropriate people on the outside to to send people to responsible professionals to help them. Because even though we only practice one area of, of law, which is family law, people come to us with questions about everything and i want to be able to point them because i think it's my responsibility to point them to individuals that are responsible knowledgeable and and ethical i love that and that's that's exactly uh well, something that i do and i recommend to all my clients to regardless of the service that you offer i typically work with accountants and tax pros for the most part but any service provider especially you know you can do law you can do accounting you can do these things that you're solving a problem and then you're seen as a trusted business advisor more than just a service provider especially Absolutely. if you position yourself like that so i as a marketer I, I i teach my clients to position themselves since the beginning as i'm a trusted advisor that especially is on doing these things but if you have other problems then i can also help you solve them uh, either directly if it's something that i do or indirectly right if you look for other specializations within the same thing or outside of that thing, right? Like working with accountants, oh, they need, uh, now they need help with a financial advisor. They need help with a lawyer. Now, for example, like I'm building a relationship with you on this specific thing and in family law. And then one thing that I wanted to ask you, is this specifically for California? Is that like, is it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. we. So, uh, I only practice law in the state of California. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, you know, somebody that needs uh, help with family law in California, then now, now because I have you here and you're a connection for, for a friend of mine uh, that, that got this, like, you know, we have this, this relationship now and I have uh, references and things that now I can drive people to you or my clients, like my accounting clients, for example, can also drive traffic to you. So being able to position yourself uh, like by positioning yourself as a trusted business advisor, somebody that can advise you in, in a lot of ways, not just the thing that you do, but you do specialize on this. That's when you open up uh, that, that the doors to other possibilities to have partnerships that you can then bring value to each other. That could be monetarily or, or sharing leads or things like that, right? That's up to, to the, to the, the arrangements that you do with your partnerships, but position yourself Absolutely. like that is what opens the door so that's something that i recommend so i hear you saying those things and that's music to my ears because uh like that's exactly what i want everybody every service provider to do <laughs> absolutely all right uh so very nice meeting you um if you have uh, any other questions i'm here to answer them but i think we've um we've done a service to your uh audience and and kind of provided a roadmap that can really help people um, when they're in a pickle or they have a family member who's in a difficult situation, because uh, like I said, this is a high stakes game and you want to make sure you show up, you don't show up to a gunfight with a sword, right? Kind of deal. <laughs> so exactly. you want to make sure you have the appropriate team on your side and the appropriate professional. So thank you so much for allowing us to be here and share our perspective, uh, our knowledge and our passion for family law, because it is an area of law that uh, we, we are passionate about and we are zealous advocates. Thanks for, for taking the time. I know I learned a lot. There's a lot of great information in here. So uh, we'll have all the links in the description. So if you didn't hear, like, hear it, but you couldn't type it, like all the links are going to be in the description. So just look for them in there. Uh, thank you again, Patrick. And uh, this was Patrick and Fu, and this is us signing off. Thanks for listening to Moments with Fu with your host, Fu. 
Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates and we will see you on the next episode.